Hi everyone and welcome back to my channel. I hope you're all doing well and having a fantastic week. In today's video, Scampi Pickles and I are gonna tell you about five different bonding and taming mistakes that you really wanna avoid making with your bird. Sometimes we make these by accident, but it's really important to learn from them and do things in a different way because then we can have a happy and healthy, loving relationship with our pet birds. So let's dive straight in. Now the first bonding and taming mistake you want to avoid making is forcing interactions with your birds. It's something we do see an awful lot and I understand it often comes from a place of love. People just want to interact with their birds immediately, they're so excited. But we have to remember that these are living creatures and they don't know us yet when we first bring them home. Even if they've been hand raised, that doesn't mean they know you. They can differentiate between different humans. So you have to build your bond from scratch, even if wherever you got them from, so they're hand tame, silly tame, loving and friendly, that bird doesn't know you yet. So you have to show them that you are a really awesome human and that you are going to listen to them. Now, some examples of forced interactions would be getting your bird out of the cage too quickly and just expecting them to be comfortable interacting with you or their environment. It could be literally scaring them out of the cage because you want them out immediately. And that's no good. You want your bird to be able to feel confident coming out when they feel happy to do so once you've built up some of those foundation skills for bonding. Another one we see quite often is when people want their birds to step up, they just push into their bird's stomach to make them step up because the bird is trying to avoid that uncomfortable pressure on their chest. That is not a good idea. Train your bird to step up voluntarily and then you'll have more success with it and you won't have your bird in any discomfort. And as well, something unfortunately a lot of people do is when they're trying to encourage their bird over to them, instead of spending the extra time and working with treats and just being patient, they want the bird to come to them immediately. So they'll put their hand in the cage and they'll keep cornering their bird into one corner, like, come on, you're going to step up whether you like it or not. Now, to me, I don't know about you, but that doesn't sound like a very um, great relationship to have with your bird if you're forcing them to participate with you. So again, take it nice and slow. Please don't kind of force any interactions with your bird. The next way that you are going to make a mistake with bonding and taming is grabbing your bird. This kind of comes back to the last point of getting your bird out of their cage too quickly because if you haven't target trained them or trained them to step up in a voluntary basis, if you let your bird out, they're probably not going to want to go back in that cage. So you're going to have to catch them up, grab them with a the towel, and they are going to be terrified of you. It's not going to be a pleasant experience. They are a prey animal. So a big scary human coming at them with grasping hands or a towel is not going to do your relationship relationship any good. So we recommend having those foundational skills built up in the cage first, so target training through the bars, establishing what their favourite treats are, um, you know, working on hands, not being scary, and then when they do come out it's going to be a lot easier for you to get them back in the cage instead of having to grab them. Also, if you grab your bird in a really inappropriate way, then it can cause them a lot of problems, they won't be able to breathe properly, and also they're really small and sensitive, um, so we don't want to be grabbing them at all. We to avoid that unless it's an emergency. The next bonding and taming mistake is not offering them any reinforcement, also known as treats, for when they do something. You know, we wouldn't work for free, so why should we expect our birds to? If they step up, if they do a trick for us, if they recall to us, if they go in the cage nicely, we should be giving them a reward for it because it's behaviour we want to see more of. So make sure that you are offering your birds treats when they're doing things you want to see more of, especially step up. That's something we see quite often. People don't really reinforce for it. Um, they just see it as something birds are supposed to do. But it is a, a trained and consent-based behavior. It's like a trick. You have to train your bird how to do it. So make sure you're giving them treats and also knowing what their favorite treat is. Now, my partner David, the parrot teacher, has an awesome video on how to work out what your bird's favorite number one treat is. Um, so I'll leave that up above and down below for you to check out. Now something that is a bit controversial but shouldn't be controversial and this is a massive bonding and taming mistake is clipping your bird's wings. There's a lot of myths out there saying that that's going to help you tame your bird faster but actually it's going to do the complete opposite. When you clip your bird's wings you're stopping them from moving properly, you're making their flight uncontrolled because clipped birds no matter what the awful clip some people do they can still fly, they just fly with no coordination and no skill. So they are not going to be able to land properly, they're going to crash land, potentially hurt themselves, fly into walls. Um, so clipping wings is not good for um, trying to bond with and tame your bird. It also comes back to this kind of forced interactions. The reason people do it is because it means, or at least thinks they means, that their bird can't get away from them. And we want our birds to want to come to us, not because they have to, because they have no other choice. 
it also leads to lots of fear-based behaviors which is a real shame because we don't want to be altering our birds bodies for our own convenience because we're trying to rush through bonding and taming you wouldn't tie a dog's legs up so it couldn't get away from you so you can you know tame it faster and it's the same with birds you're physically altering their body through clipping off some of their wings and that means that they just can't get away and they have to participate in what you're doing. We call this learned helplessness and it means that your bird realises they have no other choice, it doesn't matter whether they say no, they have to participate and they kind of go into shutdown mode which is really really sad to see. So please 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 if there's one thing you take away from this video please do never 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 clip your bird's wings. There are so many issues with it and you know people are always trying to argue with me about this but it is never ever good for your birds it comes with lots and lots of problems it won't keep them safe it is very very dangerous for them and the last thing that I wanted to talk about today point number five of the bonding and taming mistakes is rushing <laughs> now we are always so excited to bring a new bird home and have this wonderful amazing creature in our lives we just want to snuggle them play with them and do all sorts of amazing training but we have to remember again it comes back to them being a prey animal they've literally just gone from one home to another they have no idea who you are where they are what's going on what to expect from you so you need to build up this foundational trust building exercises like i keep coming back to because you want to make sure that you have that great relationship relationship built up on mutual respect and consent. You don't want to be forcing interactions. You don't want to be making them feel uncomfortable and that they have no choice to participate. So that's where taking your time is important. In order to live with parrots successfully, you have to be an exceptionally patient person, <laughs> which I think I've developed over the years. I'm very, very patient when it comes to these lovely feathered creatures. But we want to go nice and slow because slow and steady wins the race. If we try and rush it, we're probably gonna maybe misread body language, we're gonna um, come across lots of biting and maybe other undesirable behaviors, and we don't want any of that. We want our birds to be living happy and healthy long lives, and part of that is working on these different steps to bond with and tame your bird. So that brings me to the end of this video. Pickles and Scampi just having a lovely time <laughs> freeing each other. Another tip, um, which I like to mention in as many videos as possible, if you have more than one bird, that doesn't affect your relationship with you. You just have to put in extra effort like you would anyway. Um, you can absolutely have more than one bird and still have a relationship with them as they are bonded up. And Pickles and Scampi and all of our other pairs are perfect examples. But anyway, that's, that's a whole tangent. But if you do need any help with uh, bonding and taming work with your bird, don't forget that David and I have our business Best Behaved Birds. All the info is going to be down in the description. We offer bespoke and affordable uh, parrot care consultations globally. So we would love to help you with your bonding and taming with your pet bird. But from me, Pickles and Scampi, thank you so much for watching. If you like this kind of content, don't forget to like, subscribe and hit the notification bell for more content like this and it really helps my channel. But I really appreciate you being here today. Hope you like the video. Take care and see you later.